friends, welcome. My name is Angela and today we're gonna draw cute stuff. This is a book I wrote on how to draw anything and everything cute. It has step by steps for people, animals, and even objects. If you don't have this book, it's okay, you can still draw with me. It's only bonus if you do have a book. So let's go over the material that you will need. You'll need a pencil or a mechanical pencil, anything that's erasable. You'll need an eraser. You'll also need a pen or a marker, any kind of inking tool. And then you'll need colors. That can be any kind of marker, crayons, or even colored pencils. Before we make anything cute, let's do a warm up. You'll need paper and any kind of marking tool. Warm up is nice to get you in the mood for drawing. You can practice making a simple shape like a circle. You can draw the circle in one stroke, like this, or you can draw it in small sketches, or make continuous strokes. Everyone has a different style. Once you feel good about circles, try making triangles. And when you're done with the triangles, go for squares. These are the three basic shapes that we will be using today. You can also elongate your shapes, so you can make rectangles, ovals, long triangles. These are all variations of basic shapes. And that's it for warm up. Hopefully your hands feel a little bit more loose. Let's draw an elephant today. You'll notice that the elephant is made up of circles and squares. You'll be needing paper, a pencil, and an eraser. Start by sketching a circle very lightly with your pencil. This will be the head of the elephant. Then draw two ovals on both sides of the circle. Make sure to make this very light because we will erase it in a bit. Now get your eraser and erase the parts where the oval and the circle intersect. We won't need these for later. Now draw another oval underneath the head. This will be the body of the elephant. Again, make sure that it's light so that you can erase it. Now for the legs. This is where you'll need to draw squares. Make four squares underneath the oval body. For the tail, draw a line and then a circle. The trunk of the elephant is kind of like a rectangle, so you can draw a curved rectangle. Now the last part of this is just erasing the pieces that you don't need. Now that you have your light sketch, we can go into the next step, which is inking. You'll need a pen or a marker. Here I'm using a dark marker. Go over your light sketch with your marker. Make sure that you're only outlining the parts that you want. For example, right now I'm outlining only the outside of my illustration. I'm making single strokes and not getting all of the little sketches. You can always go back to add details. So here, I'm adding details on the eyes and the little toe beans on the legs of the elephant. Then go over with your marker again. Now we need to erase the sketch, but before we do that, the ink needs to dry. You can shake your illustration like this, and it'll be dry in no time. When you're sure that it's dry, start to erase lightly over your illustration. Notice how your sketch will disappear, and you will just have your inked piece.
The last part of this drawing is to color your elephant. Choose any markers, crayons, or colored pencils and colors that you would like. I'm going to go with pink and blue colored pencils. I like to color in one direction. This is called hatching. And I usually start with the lighter color. So here, I'm coloring with pink first. Then I'll go over with blue because it's a bit darker. There are other ways you can color other than hatching. You can try coloring in a circle or coloring in multiple directions. Don't forget to add shadows underneath the ear, behind the legs, and on the back ear. This will make your elephant really pop out. And that's it! You got a cute elephant! You can choose to leave the elephant on the paper, or you can cut it out into a square and frame it somewhere else. Maybe in a scrapbook, or a sticker book. Sometimes I like to cut out the edges, where I just trace the elephant around the border and only cut to its shape. Next drawing! I'm going to use my sketchbook this time, and we will be drawing a shark. The shark is made up of an interesting looking oval. The body is the large oval, and the tails, the fins, are triangles. Start with an oval for the shark's body. Near the end of the shark, it will be a bit skinnier, so you'll get this interesting oval shape. You can imagine all the fins like triangles. Start making different sized triangles on the top, the tail, and the bottom. Even the shark's mouth is kind of like a triangle. Now that we're done with the sketch, we're going to start inking, just like we did with the elephant. Trace only the outline of where you sketched and add little details. Again, we'll have to wait for the ink to dry, so you can shake it, you can pat it, then erase gently around your illustration. Now the last step again is coloring. I'm going to use purple, but you can use whatever color you want. And that's it! We drew a shark and an elephant today! Thank you so much for drawing with me, and I hope you had fun making cute animals. If you have the book, try out other animals that use different shapes. If you want to share your artwork with me, you can always tag me on Instagram or Twitter at Picarar. I also have four other books that you can check out online or at your local bookstore. Anyways, I hope to draw with you again another time. See ya! Hi, my name is Joy Ang, and I'm a children's book illustrator. I have worked on books called Mustache Baby, Princesses vs. Dinosaurs, and the covers for a series called Wings of Fire. Today, I'm going to be reading to you Mulan. So, many of you may think of the Disney animated or live action movie that just came out, but this Mulan is based on a very old Chinese folk song that was created around the 4th to 6th century. That's around 1500 years ago. 
And this book here is translated by Fei Lin Wu and illustrated by me. So let's give it a read. There once was a smart and strong-willed girl named Mulan, who lived in a small village in northern China with her parents, older sister, and younger brother. One day, Mulan sat weaving, watching her father pacing in the room. He looked old and frail. She stopped. Turning to her father, she asked, Baba, what is worrying you? With a faraway look in his eyes, her father replied, I received a letter. The emperor is called for all men to defend our country. I must leave the family to join the army. How can you go? You are not well, and brother is far too young to go, Mulan said with concern in her voice. Mulan thought for a moment and then announced, Baba, I can go in your place. How can you serve? You are only a girl, replied her father. I know I can. I am a strong and able girl, Mulan insisted. The next day, Mulan, dressed in her father's clothes, went to the market to buy a horse, a saddle, a bridle, and a whip for the trip. In the morning, Mulan bid farewell to her family. When she arrived at the army camp, she and the troops set off for the north. Riding long miles, Mulan traveled to the Yellow River. At night, she camped at the riverbank. Tired, Mulan dozed off to the sound of running water. She dreamed about her parents calling for her. Mulan. She missed her family. Mulan rode on and traveled up to the top of Black Mountain and settled across from the enemy's camp. Exhausted, she fell asleep to the distant sound of the neighing horses. Again, Mulan dreamed about her parents calling her name. She missed her family even more, but she knew she was a strong and able girl. She was determined to work hard serving her country to make her family proud. For 12 years, Mulan endured many hardships. She rode over numerous mountain peaks and traveled thousands of miles on tired legs. Often she stayed awake through the freezing nights. Mulan fought in hundreds of battles and led her comrades to many victories. With her skills and bravery, Mulan rose quickly through the ranks. As a victorious commander, Mulan led her troops back to the emperor's palace. The proud emperor beckoned the triumphant troops to appear before him. Mulan was awarded with countless pieces of gold and other treasures for her courage and service. The emperor praised Mulan and appointed her to the high court. The emperor asked Mulan what she might desire. Thank you, emperor. I do not wish for the appointment to the high court. I only want to go back home to my family, Mulan replied. The news of Mulan's return reached her family. 
To welcome her home, Mulan's parents eagerly waited at the outskirts of the town for her arrival. Her older sister was cheerfully dressing in her best outfit, while her younger brother was busily setting up for a feast. Upon arriving home, Mulan hugged her family. It's kind of hard to see, but that's Mulan hugging her family there with her horse. She was happy to see them. She went to her room, she took off her armor, and changed into her favorite dress. She sat down in front of her mirror, brushed out her tangled hair, and carefully applied color to her cheeks. Mulan then rejoined her army buddies who were celebrating with her family in the living room. The men looked up at Mulan as she entered the room. With eyes wide open and a surprised look on their faces, they said in wonder, How is it possible we did not know that a respected leader was a girl all along? Mulan smiled and responded, One should not judge another by their appearance alone. When a pair of rabbits run side by side, can you tell the female from the male? Mulan continued, a woman can fight any battle. Now I am happy once again to be just me, Mulan, a strong and able woman. And in the back here, you can see the original ballad of Mulan written in Chinese. Thanks for reading with me.